Hi there everyone. Welcome back to 3 News Now. I'm Stephanie Haney. Today is Tuesday, August 17th. Thank you for being here for the top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. We start off with addressing what President Joe Biden said about the situation in Afghanistan where U.S. troops have withdrawn after about two decades in Afghanistan. It was at the White House where he called out the anguish of trapped Afghan civilians. He called it gut wrenching. He did concede that the Taliban had achieved a much faster takeover of the country than his administration had expected and that the U.S. was rushing troops in to protect its own, evacuating diplomats and others at the Kabul airport. Remember those scenes that we saw of Afghan refugees clinging to a plane to try to get out of there. However, despite that, President Biden said, I stand squarely behind my decision. He also said the buck stops with me. He said he wasn't going to pass this problem on to future presidents. But when he said the buck stops with me, he wasn't talking about blame because he placed the blame pretty squarely on the people of Afghanistan. Taliban fighters swept across the country last week after the U.S. announced its withdrawal, captured the capital of Kabul. That was on Sunday, sending the U.S.-backed Afghan President Ashraf Ghani fleeing Afghanistan. Biden said that he had warned Ghani, who was an appointed Afghanistan president in a U.S. negotiated agreement, to be prepared to fight a civil war against the Taliban after U.S. forces left and that they failed to do any of that. Now here in Cuyahoga County, leadership is opening its arms to Afghan refugees. President of Global Cleveland Joe Simperman said this on Monday, releasing this statement. There is a great tragedy unfolding in Afghanistan right before our eyes as tens of thousands of people flee the Taliban, fearing for their lives and the lives of those they love. Cleveland is ready. Cuyahoga County is ready. We as a community and as a people are ready to answer the call and open our doors to our Afghan brothers and sisters in need. With open arms, we'll accept the Afghan people. Simberman went on to say, Cleveland has welcomed people from across the world in the past century, and we are ready to do so again. We are a welcoming city, a welcoming community, and a welcoming people. The world is watching. History shows us we have done this before. Our hearts tell us we need to do this again. Now, there is disturbing footage coming out of the situation in Afghanistan. During the rush to evacuate people, one U.S. military cargo plane safely transported around 640 Afghanistan citizens out of the country. That's according to the U.S. Air Force. There's a photo that's been circulating. We have it on WKYC.com provided by the U.S. Air Force. It shows a C-17 packed with hundreds of men, women and children trying to escape Afghanistan after the Taliban's takeover of the capital, Kabul. Defense One, which was the first to report on it, cited a defense official who said the flight operating as Reach 871 was not meant to take so many people, but Afghan citizens who had been cleared to evacuate had pulled themselves onto the plane as its ramp was closing just highlighting the incredible means these people are willing to take in order to try and get out of Afghanistan as the Taliban returns to power there. Now, the official told the outlet that instead of trying to force people off, the crew made the decision to go and took off for an air base in Qatar. Now, news of that packed plane spread around. There was audio posted online that appeared to be the C-17 pilot telling a flight controller they believe they had 800 people on board. Now, we know it ended up being 640 people, but that person said, holy cow, good job getting off the ground. Absolutely shocked at the possibility that there might be 800 people and not far off from that on that plane. Now, in total, again, 640 Afghan citizens got off the plane when it landed. The C-17 in the photo is typically designed to carry 102 paratroopers and their gear, but it can hold up to 171,000 pounds of cargo. That's according to the U.S. Air Force. Now here in Ohio, the COVID-19 situation continues to develop. Governor DeWine having a press conference today as of this recording that was scheduled for 3.30 p.m. We have streamed that. That's on WKYC.com, also our WKYC app and our YouTube and Facebook pages. So you can find that press conference there leading up to the press conference. No clear indication of what Governor DeWine would be speaking to. But what we do know today from the Ohio Department of Health is that there have been 3,235 new COVID-19 cases reported in the last 24 hours. That is well above the 21 day average, which is now at 1,945. Big increase from Monday. Now, when we were talking about these numbers yesterday, 
I did point out that usually we see smaller numbers over the weekend, and we saw numbers in the thousands all weekend long. So definitely high case numbers, not the numbers that we've been used to seeing. We do see those case numbers at levels that we haven't seen here in Ohio in quite some time. And right now there are 1,575 people being treated for COVID-19 in the hospital. That's an increase of 116 people in the last 24 hours. And out of those people, 466 are being treated in the ICU. That's an increase of 13 ICU admissions in the last 24 hours. Now we've talked about this before. We've talked about it in legally speaking segments and in different segments. Your employer, yes, can require you to get a COVID-19 vaccine, and our Verify team is now looking at the claim about collecting unemployment if you are fired or quit over a vaccine requirement. There's a post that's going around that says if your employer, if your employer excuse me, is mandating a COVID-19 vaccine, the quote is, do not quit, make them fire you, that way you get unemployment benefits. That's not true. Our Verify team has determined and confirmed that is not true. You are not eligible for unemployment if you quit or are fired from a job that requires a COVID vaccine that you did not get. This is according to the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services. So straight from the source, unemployment insurance is available for people who are unemployed due to no fault of their own. And in general, if you are voluntarily leaving a job, you're not eligible for unemployment. So across the country here in Ohio, there are workplaces that are requiring employees get the COVID-19 vaccine as part of that policy. Now, legally, there are some exemptions, but if you don't fall into one of those exemptions and you don't get the vaccine, you cannot get unemployment if you are quit or are fired for not getting that vaccine as a reason for being fired because of being against company policy. Now, another story that we're following is the incident at Cedar Point on Sunday, where a piece of metal from the top thrill dragster struck a female who was in line in that area. And body cam footage has now been released by the Sandusky Register. They posted that moments when first responders arrive on the scene, showing sort of chaos of the moment. Now, this we still are waiting to learn more about the woman. We do know that she was transferred to an area hospital and then to a trauma center in Toledo. We still don't know how old she is or what her current condition is. And we do know, though, while this is rare, it has happened before specifically tied to the top thrill dragster. It was in July of 2004 when a rider had a piece of metal pierce his ear and another piece of metal protruding from the arm. That was according to the Akron Beacon Journal. This was also tied to the top thrill dragster. And then in August 2016, two riders had to be treated for minor injuries when the launch cable detached from the ride. And then the ride was closed the following day while the investigation followed because of that incident. Three News did speak with several guests and our reporter Marissa Sines talked with David Vallow who identified himself as a registered nurse. He said that when the thing happened, everyone was running the other way saying that a woman was hurt. Well, he ran towards her to try and be as helpful as possible. He said he got on the ground with her and he did everything that he could until the Sandusky EMS arrived, but there was only so much that he could do with people's clothing and things to keep her calm and try to control the situation. He said that both Cedar Point EMS and Sandusky EMS officials arrived pretty quickly after that. And after that, they helped him and other guests get cleaned up and that he was still kind of processing everything that happened and it would still be staying with him to this day. Of course, as we have updates, we will definitely bring those to you on WKYC.com and also on 3 News and our WKYC app. Now, Coming up this Friday, the tribe is hosting its annual give a thon and that will air live on WKYC. This is in connection with CLE Inspires Week. This is their third annual give a thon. It's presented by Colleg Giving and it's in line with them hosting the Los Angeles Angels at Progressive Field this weekend. It will air also on Valley Sports Great Lakes and this will benefit two tribe charities. Their main programs Play Ball CLE and Cleveland RBI. Now their goal is to raise $250,000. They want to help kids learn, grow and win on and off the field. That's the mission. They're looking to support. Uh, if you're looking to support this year's give -a we have the link on WKYC.com to do that. That begins Friday, August 20th through the end of the day on Sunday, August 22nd. And Friday's broadcast will also highlight youth baseball and softball initiatives, and we'll have guest appearance from the Colleague Company's chairman, Matt Colleague, with live donation updates throughout the game, which will be right here on Channel 3. And also, the first 300 people to donate $100 or more on Friday will get an autographed baseball from either Jose Ramirez, Aaron Zavale, or Zach Plesak.
Now, over the course of the first two giveathons, remember this is the third, fans and partners of the tribe raised nearly $500,000 for tribe charities. That is a lot of money. And in a very different corner of the internet today, remember that serial coming out for Cleveland Browns running back Nick Chubb? You know that one who just signed a three-year, $36.6 million extension with the Cleveland Browns that'll keep him with the team through 2024? Yes, that running back Nick Chubb, who we all love so much, especially on our fantasy football teams. Well, his cereal is available this week at Heinen's Grocery Stores in Northeast Ohio. This is a cinnamon toast crunch like cereal. It's called Chubb Crunch and proceeds will go to charity. They will benefit First Candle. Now this is an organization committed to eliminating sudden infant death syndrome, which is commonly known as SIDS and other sleep related infant deaths through education and support for families that are going through a loss particular to those particular types of loss. So here's what Nick Chubb said. He said, I'm excited to release Chubb Crunch with PLB Sports and Entertainment. It's always been a dream to have my own cereal, especially one that benefits a cause that is close to my family. Now, if you take a look at the box, you see Nick Chubb on it in a Batman costume. This is a superhero that we often see him paying homage to with his clothes since he's been with the Browns since the 2018 NFL Draft. So if you want to get yourself a box of Chubb Crunch, you can pick that up at Heinen's in Northeast Ohio this week. And that's it for your three news now update today for Tuesday, August 17th. I will see you next up on what's new with your trending stories in the Clicking in Cleveland segment. I'll also see you on Front Row tonight at 7 p.m. with a preview of this week's Three Things to Know podcast all about what it's really like to date in Cleveland and if Cleveland lives up to that seventh best city for singles based on Clever Real Estate's rankings. And I will see you back here tomorrow for more Three News Now.